Hello all, welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for red and blue teams. Now in this video, we'll begin with an actual process listing API, right, finally. So the one we are going to look at is called WTS Enumerate Processes EX. So what is this API? Now, interestingly, this API is part of the remote desktop API uh, kind of suite. And the interesting thing is that you can use this even to query the list of processes on the local machine. So let's actually jump very quickly into the documentation. So here it is as part of the remote desktop services API. Now the arguments to this are really very simple. The first is actually a handle to a remote desktop session host server. Now whenever we are using a local server, we can just mention WTS current server handle, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the code, really small proof of concept, do not get daunted by it where we are going to compare what we see in the documentation with what we have in code. I just love creating these really small skeleton snippets. So I am running Visual Studio Express Edition in Windows 10. As I said, you can download an evaluation version. Let's give it a second. Let's open this up. There we go, right? Uh, so if we go down over here, simple program, we are going to call WTS enumerate process. This is EX. Now, as I mentioned, the very first is actually a handle to the server, which would be WTS current server handle. So that's exactly what I've put in here. Fantastic. Now, as far as the next one is concerned, P level. Now this says a pointer to a D word variable that specifies the type of information to return. And there seems to be two possibilities. One is a WTS process infrastructure. And the second one is a WTS process info EX structure, right? So if we want this, we are going to specify a zero. If we want this, we are going to specify a one. So if we go in here, so what do we get in this process info structure? We get the session ID, not very useful, right? From our perspective, the process ID, very useful. The process name, and we also get the user SID, right? or the security identifier. Now, as far as EX is concerned, we seem to get the exact four things, and then also the number of threads, the handle count, page file usage, blah, blah, blah. Now, even though if you think about it, this is sufficient, but just so that we feel a little bit more elite, let's actually go ahead and get the EX version of the structure, right? Let's supersize it. So this is what we're going to use. So what I've done is I have defined a D word level, set it to one just as requested so that we get a WTS process info EX structure and we pass the address of that. Great. Let's move further. After that, you have the session ID. Uh, so of course, when you have remote desktops and all that, you can have multiple sessions running concurrently, right? So what we could do is, in our case, we actually want for pretty much every possible session. So this requires us to use WTS any session as the option, which is exactly what I have done here. And of course, we finally would require uh, you know, some place where this API can return all the data, which is really what is the 
next uh, argument which we need to pass and then of course the number of such processes which are there right so these two together will tell us the number of processes and then it gives us this structure which we can then go ahead parse one after the other and get information about every process so if we go back in here this is what we do right fantastic now after we receive this input the idea would be to go through each of these structures for every process and to print out interesting info right which is really what we are doing in this very simple for loop right we know the process count and then we go through each of these structures and print out the process id uh, the handle count the number of threads and the process name which is what we are going to do in part one we will slowly increase the complexity and I will also talk about other important met, uh, important things such as uh, process tokens and privilege levels and all of that, right? So I'm going to make it slowly more and more interesting and complicated. So let's use a very basic version right now. And after this, we call WTS free memory EX to free the memory. So let's go back to the PPT. As I said, we have WTS process info and WTS process info EX. Let's go with the EX version and now let the games begin. So I'm going to go back here and let us run this program. Okay, so we see we have 74 processes. Uh, this is of course nothing but, you know, a counter for the number of processes. Then you have the PID, the number of handles, threads, and the process name. Uh, first PID is zero. This is nothing but the idle process. There is really no real name to it. Uh, and from there on you have PID four, which is system. And then as you can clearly see all the processes running are listed right including WTS technique basics exe which is really us right we can press any key to exit now before this let us go ahead and verify by using process explorer from the sys internals tool suite right so that we can roughly make sure that we have uh, covered all processes so let's go back this is more of just a quick introduction uh, to let's go back this internal tool suite we're going to be running the 64 bit version of process explorer let's actually run it as the current user let's not do admin yet right so if you see let's actually Go ahead and sort this by PID and if you notice processes are 74 and I think of course processes are getting created and killed all the time but we roughly see the same 74 here as well I mean a, a true comparison would have to be you know us going ahead and trying to check out every possible combination and if that exists so roughly looks like we are on the right track that's fantastic right uh, feel so good. We, we are where Process Explorer is. Fantastic. So, this is great. Let's actually go back. Now, if you recall, in this structure, we have a SID here, right? And we would like to print the SID and then we would also like to find the username as well as the host name, right? For each of the processes which are running. Uh, so this is what we are going to do in the next video which is take it up one level ahead and try and see what we will need to do in order to get that information. So hope you enjoyed this video. That's all I have for this one. Uh, if you're enjoying your time at Pentester Academy, please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues.
Thank you.